Hey guys, um, I'm here with Ryan uh, Dixon, uh, amateur fighter, up and coming mixed martial artist. We're going to show you guys. First, I want to share my thoughts on the Frankie Edgar Gray Maynard fight. I thought it was an awesome fight. I was jumping out of my seat. I wanted, uh, you know, as when Frankie started to come back from the adversity that he faced in the first round, I really wanted him to win that fight. So I was jumping up and I thought he did enough to win the fight. And I thought he did a great job because the way uh, it looked after the first round, it looked like he had no chance. Like Gray was popping him with power. Uh, he really couldn't seem to take Gray down. He was eating a lot of shots, taking a lot of damage, but he made an adjustment in the second round uh, and did a few things much better than he did in the first. So what I want to do is give my take on what I thought changed the fight, uh, changed the momentum of the fight so that Frankie's begin to be able to turn things around. Uh, the first out being the shot that caught Frankie was the left hook. So it was a lead left hook. The lead left hook is actually uh, a dangerous punch to throw by itself. Uh, I like to lead with my jab first and then throw my hook because the lead hook can be countered uh, in many different ways. So what I'm going to show you first is just uh, a few ways that you can counter the lead hook and stop that punch from taking your head off early in the fight. Okay, so Brian ends up getting in his fighting stance and he starts to lead with his hook a lot. This is a dangerous situation because you're always going to be able to beat them in the straight line attack. So when he starts to go with the lead hook, my jab can catch him right down the pipe. Now mind you, that jab has to be very stiff and you have to have your other hand up protecting your face. So from this position, I'm always going to beat him to the punch here. Okay, so I'm going to lean in and make my jab nice and stiff. Now it's all the basics that I've stressed in the past, bending the knee, leaning the body forward, protecting your chin on this side so the right hand doesn't hit you by punching nice and high. Okay, and from this position, it's a nice stiff jab. If I throw the jab just weak, it's not going to do nothing and that hook's going to take my head off. So when I see him leaving the hook, boom, a nice stiff jab is going to catch him down the pipe and beat him to it. Also, if he throws his hook, he's very vulnerable to the straight right. And that's a move that Frankie started to pull off. And when he landed it, it shocked Gray a little bit. And he stopped throwing that hook as much. And that made uh, things much easier for Frankie in, in the fight. So if you watch the fight, you'll see as he threw a lead hook, Frankie one time, or many times actually, caught him with the straight right hand right down the pipe. Okay, and that started to change the momentum uh, of the fight. Now, if you look in between rounds, his corner was calling for him to do more head movement. That's something we worked on a lot here. Uh, they were calling, if you listen to the words that he used, they said roll. And roll is a simple movement that gets your head off the line at the most important time, uh, which is after your punching combination. So his coach in the corner, uh, must have been his boxing coach, was yelling at him to move his head after his combinations. And when he started to do that, his head was no longer uh, in danger of getting uh, smacked around uh, like it was in the first round. So from here, fighting stands, I'm going to show you two ways that, that I like to roll protect my face after a combination. Now, I'm not going to get into a fancy combination. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to do the jab cross. And I'm going to work right in here so you guys can check it out. So in your fighting stance, you're going to throw your jab, one, nice and high, so you don't take a right hand to the face over the top, and then you cross. Now, many times his left hook is going to come, okay, or some punch is going to come. So I want you to roll underneath. You're going to bend your legs. The most important thing here is that you drop straight down. So from here, you're going to drop straight down first. A lot of guys roll and they move their head to the side can't do that because the punch is coming here and you might actually increase the power of the punch. So you're going to go here and you're going to drop your ass straight down by bending. Boom. So you get out of danger. And then you're going to roll back. My head's not going to move left and right. My heel is going to come down. It was up because I was punching and it's going to go back into my fighting stance and I retract to here. Okay. So I'm going to go once again. Jab. Cross. I'm going to drop my ass down. Boom. Out of the way. Out of danger. And I'm going to come back. Now this roll doesn't have to be big. It shouldn't be too big. One, two, even a tiny roll can protect your face and have the punches kind of skid by your face. Okay, not take it directly in the face. So from here, fighting stance. One, two, drop your butt down. Roll back to your fighting stance. And once again, one, two, heels up. Roll back to your fighting stance. And just that small roll can uh, do an amazing thing and keep your head safe after you throw a combination. Okay, so I'm going to work in with Ryan now so you guys can check it out. Ryan's going to demonstrate with your fighting stance. He's going to throw his jab across at me, and many times that left hook's going to come. Or some punch is going to come. As long as your head is a little bit off of where the opponent thinks it's going to be, chances are you're going to make the person miss. So one, two, roll underneath. Okay, and that's one move that Frankie did very well in the fight. And uh, luckily, because I was cheering him on to win that fight, he didn't take uh, many powerful punches after that uh, first round. So. Another rule that can happen, fighting stance here, is you're going to move your head to the left. So this happens after your left hand is the last punch in the combination. So with a jab, I'm going to bend and drop my butt down. Now the right hand's coming. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to roll to the other side. 
and I lift my heel. Okay, so I'm going to jab and I'm going to roll this way. And again, it doesn't have to be a big roll. One, two. Now it's very important that when I jab, I don't come up. Because if I come up, it's very difficult to roll. So I stay low, boom, and then I drop my butt, roll, and you notice, getting more advanced down the line, okay, in future videos, the next punch is going to be a hook. My heel's up, my body's turned, I'm ready to counter. Because when you make the person miss, it's a great opportunity to come back with a counter punch. So Ryan's going to work in with this one now. Fighting stance, he's going to have his hands up, elbows in, hollow stomach, he's going to jab, and he's going to see this coming, and a little movement can save his face from a lot of damage. Okay, even like that. Even if I just touch his head a bit, mess up his hair a little bit, no big deal. Okay, the smaller moves you make, the better. And this is a good time because chances are the guy's not going to throw a knee, he's not going to throw a kick because you just hit him in the face and then he threw a punch, boom, and you made him miss. And any of you fighters out there know, I'd rather get hit with a punch than miss a punch. Okay, when I miss a punch and I have the guy lined up and I see him there and I miss, it's exhausting. Punch to the head really doesn't hurt that much. Of course, unless it puts you out, that's not a good thing. But missing sucks. So make your opponent miss, and then eventually we're going to make him miss and come back and hit him with a few combinations of our own. So that's even worse. So though, quick review, counter that lead hook with a straight punch right down the pipe. Chances are you can maybe even knock the guy out. Uh, move your head to the right or left depending on what punch you throw. Never keep your head where your opponent uh, thinks it's going to be because that's where he's going to be firing all his power. So train hard guys. Hope this helps you out in your training. And thanks to Ryan for helping me out, and I'll see you guys soon.